A positioner is a device that precisely fixes the control valve stem position with respect to the control valve input signal. The positioner compares the valve stem position with the input signal and it produces the necessary power to make the stem position and pneumatic input signal agree. For any input within the range of a control valve, there is a resulting stem position. Ideally, the relationship between input and stem position should be linear. And the valve stem should be positioned within three to four thousandths of an inch for the corresponding input. Many factors prevent the control valve stem from assuming the correct position. For instance, high pressure drop across a valve may occur on 80% input to produce only 60% valve stem travel. Other factors which can cause nonlinear input versus valve stem position are tight packing or no packing lubrication when it is required. Or a stiff actuator diaphragm. The control valve positioner overcomes these factors and makes the valve stem move. Let's assume a control valve without a positioner has an input change of 1 16th PSI. This 1 16th PSI is the only force available to move the valve stem. If there is no resistance, the valve stem would move the corresponding amount. But what would happen if the packing was too tight? The valve stem wouldn't respond. Now let's consider the same situation except this time the valve has a positioner. The input changes 1 16th PSI, but the valve stem doesn't move. The positioner senses the input, senses that there is no corresponding stem movement, and applies more air, full air supply if needed, to make the stem assume the correct position. It should be noted that the valve positioner performs whatever action necessary to position the valve stem. This could mean full air supply on the actuator, or it could mean no air at all on the actuator. Now turn to exercise number one in your workbook. two fundamental valve positioner designs. One design is the motion balance and the other is the force balance. We will use schematic representations to study the operating principles of each positioner type. In the force balance type, the input pressure is opposed by a spring the spring tension is changed by the valve stem movement. The design is such that an increase in input signal causes the bellows to force the left hand end of the beam downward. The valve stem then moves downward, putting more tension on the spring. This action restores the beam to balance. By adding a pneumatic relay and a flapper nozzle assembly, we can affect a change in valve stem position for a change in pressure to the input bellows. An increase in pressure in the bellows causes the flapper to cover the nozzle. This immediately causes full output from the pilot. The increased air on the control valve diaphragm moves the stem downward. 
pulls tension on the spring, and restores the flapper nozzle relationship. Balance is restored, but the valve is at a different position, and the input bellows has a different pressure. For each pressure applied to the input bellows, there is a definite position the control valve stem must assume to restore balance. The positioner makes the control valve assume the definite position, or applies full force or zero force in an effort to do so. With three PSI in the input bellows, the positioner output should be three PSI, and the valve stem should be in the up position. The zero adjustment raises or lowers the flapper slightly to accomplish this alignment. A span adjustment is required to make the positioner output 15 PSI with 15 PSI input and the valve in the down position. Span changes can be accomplished by moving the beam fulcrum. Moving the pivot to the right will require more spring force to balance the beam, thus increasing the span. Let's assume the input signal increases. The flapper covers the nozzle. The relay output increases, making the valve stem lower. This produces an increased downward pull on the beam. The beam pivots at the fulcrum and uncovers the nozzle. The system is again in equilibrium. It will remain there until a disturbance occurs, such as an input change or a valve stem load change. On a decreasing input signal, the actions are the reverse of the situation resulting from an increased signal. Now turn to exercise number two in your workbook. In the motion balance positioner, the valve stem movement acts through directly connected mechanical mechanisms to restore a flapper nozzle relationship. This is a schematic illustration of a motion balance type. The force created by the pressure in the input bellows is opposed by a calibrated spring. An increase in signal pressure in the bellows causes the right end of the beam to move downward. This causes the flapper to slide along the cam and cover the nozzle. Increased output air pressure from the relay causes the valve stem to move downward. This allows the flapper to again slide along the cam, but in a direction to restore the flapper nozzle to the throttling position. The flapper nozzle relationship is restored, but there is a different air pressure in the input bellows, and the valve stem has a new position. For a decreasing input signal, the opposite action takes place the right-hand side of the beam moves upward. The flapper rides up the cam and away from the nozzle. The valve stem moves upward, forcing the flapper back toward the nozzle, and the flapper-nozzle relationship is restored. This is a schematic of the Fisher 3580 valve positioner. The calibrated spring is inside the input bellows. The beam shown here is actually the flapper. The cam works as the inclined plane used in our schematic.
increased pressure in the bellows causes the flapper to cover the nozzle and the valve stem is moved downward. The stem rotates the cam in the direction to move the beam away from the nozzle. The flapper nozzle relationship is restored but with a higher bellows pressure and different valve stem position. Some valve positioners have a bypass valve. When the positioner is in service, the input is routed to the positioner bellows and the positioner output is routed to the actuator. When the positioner is bypassed, the input goes directly to the actuator. The positioner relay, flapper nozzle, and other parts can be removed and repaired. Some valve positioners don't have a bypass valve. An example would be a reverse acting positioner in which 3 to 15 PSI input creates 15 to 3 PSI output. Operation of the positioner bypass could cause a process upset. Therefore, the bypass is removed or disabled. Now turn to exercise number three in your workbook.